Hey, I'm Anastasia, and this is Tousled Elegance. There'll be no rockin' intro or outro, and no silly sound effects today, because this is a serious video. As you can see from the title, it's a story time about what happened to my teeth. And I didn't want to make this video, but I needed to make this video. And I hope you'll understand why at the end of it. With June being Pride Month, I thought this was a perfect time to talk about this topic. And you're probably wondering what the hell teeth have to do with pride, but we'll get there. Hang on. I came out as bisexual at a very early age. I was in middle school, so I must have been about 13 or so. As an adult, I came to identify as pansexual. But growing up, despite living in Indiana, a notoriously conservative state in what's often referred to as the Bible Belt, I didn't have a particularly difficult time growing up out. Sure, I was made fun of. Sure, I was called names. Um, and things escalated, definitely, when I went to prom with a girl. Just to give you an idea of what the climate was like at the time, after that, someone wrote into the newsletter saying that we ruined our school's prom with our homosexuality. The direct quote was that we ruined prom with our homosexuality. So that's just an idea of the ignorance that we were dealing with on a pretty daily basis. Prom wasn't really our scene, so after that we went to do what we would normally do on a Friday or Saturday night, go to a show at the All Ages Club. And there was someone who hung out there as well who had given us a hard time for a while. You know, also the name calling, um, the insults at a distance, looking over to see our reaction, that type of thing. But when we arrived together as a couple dressed in our fine attire, he was enraged. That's the best way to describe it. He was enraged. And things escalated that night. He tried to trip us. He would kick us. He would spit on us. He shoved us. It got to the point where we thought, eventually he's going to try to hit us either punch us or go get a bat from his car or something that never happened thankfully and things started to die down a little bit when she went off to college and then shortly thereafter i went as well and i didn't see him for a long time until i was out with friends after i'd come home friends who were acquaintances of his so he joined our table started talking to them tried to start talking to me and I didn't really know how to react. Um, I wanted to confront him, but I was scared. Um, I wanted to give him the silent treatment, but I didn't. I decided to, rather than create drama, play it by ear, see how it went. He was different. And when my friends got up to go get another drink, he apologized to me for everything. He said that he had grown up a lot and I believed him and I accepted his apology. My friends returned, we talked for a long time actually, and I realized he's a lot smarter than anyone, myself included, had ever given him credit for. Um, he was charming, he was charming for sure. Uh, my friend started to, to filter out and he asked if I wanted to go get something to eat with him. I hesitated for a fraction of a second because of our past, but we were getting along so well um, and I felt like he you know, finally understood where I was coming from and accepted me. I thought maybe we could become friends. So I decided what's the harm in it, let's go. The area he wanted to go to, it, it was really easy for me to catch a cab home, so that was my plan. He wanted to go get tacos at a place where there's always a lot of people on the on the sidewalk the line stretches around the buildings um, and that's important so keep that in mind um, we had a nice conversation in the car too um, he was so mature about everything and I thought he's not such a bad guy after all um, I felt comfortable enough to be myself with him and I'd never been one to censor myself, so I foolishly, in hindsight, commented when I saw an attractive woman walk past and pointed her out to him. I guess kind of wanting to, I don't know, share that bond 
with them? I don't know. Um, but it was a stupid thing to say because it set him off. It really set him off. And I have to put a trigger warning here. If descriptions of physical violence are triggering to you, you should either X out or skip ahead. Do whatever you need to do for your well-being because what happens next is intense. Okay? Still with me? <laughs> I remember him pushing me to the ground. I fell probably on my knee and my elbow and started to use it for leverage to get up. Um, I, people were murmuring in the background. I couldn't understand what, what the people in line were saying, but they definitely saw what happened. You know, it was clear. As I started to get up, I don't want to talk about this, but I'm already doing it. Have you ever seen the movie American History X? Or do you know what curbing is? He raised his leg and brought his boot down on the back of my head. So my, my face, you know, my mouth, my jaw, everything hit the curb and I didn't really understand what had happened for a minute it all happened so fast I didn't really understand why either initially um, in my mind I think for a split second I thought it was an accident or that maybe he didn't mean to push me that hard um, and I wiped a little bit of blood off of my mouth um, thinking that I probably had a split lip so that was gonna suck. And then I remember wiping away some gravel as well. And I had um, rocks for, from the street gutter in my mouth and I spit those out. Those were not rocks and that was not gravel. They were pieces of my teeth. And at this point there's more murmuring um, you know, gasps of shock from, from the line of people on the sidewalk, but no one came over to help. No one came over to ask if I was okay, to help me up. Um, I think that he reached out his hand and kind of, uh, you know, yanked me up at that point. Um, and this was an area that had a lot of cops. So he hustled me to the car quickly. I'm still not putting together everything that has happened. I don't know what happened to my teeth. I just think that I'm, um, you know, injured and, and dirty from the fall. But we get in the car so as not to get arrested for public drunkenness, I suppose. And he starts driving. I think that he's taking me home, but then I, I realize he's going the wrong way. And I'm like, no, the interstate is that way. And he's like, I am too drunk to, to drive 40 minutes to your town we're gonna have to go to my place and I thought oh hell no if he thinks that we're hooking up after that he can think again no way um, I gave him the silent treatment the rest of the way when we got there um, I was really starting to feel unwell both from the alcohol and, and the impact with the concrete. <laughs> he said that he was going to sleep on the couch and I could sleep in his bed. I knew he was pretty drunk, <laughs> way too drunk to perform, thank goodness. Uh, so I didn't think that I was in too much danger and we went our separate ways to bed. Uh, woke up very early, he came into the room and he said, have you seen your mouth? And I thought, oh shit, it's like really cut up and, and bruised from the fall, right? I go in the bathroom and I look in the mirror and I see my teeth for the first time. And I cried. Um, I was less angry at him in that very moment than I was worried about how I was going to hide it from my parents and how I was going to fix it. So 
my teeth had broken off in a jagged arc shape. Um, the shortest part of which was a hair width from the gum line. Um, the longest portions were missing about half of the tooth and there was a little chip out of the neighboring tooth. So I'm freaking out. <laughs> He's like, let's get you home. Um, it's pretty early in the morning when I get there and I sneak into my bedroom and go to sleep. Um, hoping I can stay in there as long as possible and not have to run into my parents. I, I don't want them to know. I don't want them to see. I foolishly thought that I could hide this from them. Again, foolish. I, I guess that I was um, not so bright when I was younger. And eventually I had to get up and eat and get some fluids in me. I tried not to open my mouth. I tried to speak without showing my teeth. Um, I didn't smile. I didn't say very much to them at all. I don't know why I thought I could hide this from them because it was clearly affecting my speech. There was a, a hole basically in the center of my mouth. Uh, so they saw. My mom cried. I had to explain to them a portion of what had happened because there were facts that they didn't need to know. And they wanted me to press criminal charges, but I didn't want to do that because this is someone that, you know, I would see on a regular basis. I didn't want to piss him off again or any more than he obviously already had been. And they wanted me to get him to try to pay for fixing it at the very least, but I knew he didn't have any money. I knew that was not a road that I wanted to try to go down because it would also rock the boat. I don't know why I was so worried about rocking the boat, but I was. So I did nothing. My parents didn't have insurance. I didn't have insurance. I didn't even have a job. Um, eventually I moved in with a friend who wanted me to watch his kids on the weekends in exchange for rent. So that's what I did. And he had a friend who was a general dentist, not a cosmetic dentist, but a general dentist. And he agreed to try to maybe patch up my smile with some sort of temporary fix so that I looked um, a little less frightening. <laughs> um, he took a composite resin and he built it up and attached it to what was left of the teeth so that they looked like full-size unbroken teeth. He did okay. He did what he could and it was certainly an improvement from what was already there. Um, but I know it was just temporary and I hoped that someday I'd be a real, you know, adult with a job and insurance and eventually that did happen for me. I got a job and I got insurance. I went to the dentist. They did two root canals on one tooth and they failed. They thought they could save the tooth though, so they did something that was called an apodectomy, I think it's pronounced. This is gross, so might want to skip ahead also if you're cringy about things <laughs> like this involving dentistry. He sliced open the gum and pulled out manually the infection that was in there and he said that it was a little bit larger than a dime. He tried to show it to me but I wasn't having that and it it smelled horrendous in that entire room and I was mortified. Um, but I was grateful to have that taken care of and with my insurance in that calendar year I was also able to get one crown so I intended to wait for my benefits to reset, renew, and I would come back and get the other crown. That didn't happen because unfortunately, my employer fell on financial difficulties, could no longer afford our insurance, and he canceled it for all employees. And after that, I just sort of accepted it and lived from paycheck to paycheck for quite a while. I hoped again that someday I would be able to get credit, have credit, be able to make payments and get the work done 
that still needed to be completed, but it didn't work out that way. And I want to show you what it looks like up close and explain what you're seeing. So let's do that. <clears throat> This is where it was broken, lark here. The discoloration that you're seeing on this tooth, the dark portion is because it is a dead tooth. It's no longer living tissue. And the lighter portion is still composite resin from the general dentist's uh, temporary fix. This is the crown, and this is a little patch of a chip that the general dentist made and the cosmetic dentist was able to, to touch it up just a little bit. So that was nice, I suppose. I still have other problems um, in my mouth because of the trauma to it. Um, you know, I was in pain for a while, so I would hold my mouth in a certain way. I would... Um, try not to bite down. Uh, since there were <laughs> portions of my teeth missing, the teeth around it shifted. I no longer have uh, and, and, and even bite. My jaw is a little bit crooked. My teeth don't touch in the back. Um, and it clicks here and here. I'm not asking for your sympathy or money to fix this. I'm just explaining what happened, why, and why it still looks like this. Um, the people that know what happened to me, and it's not very many, I did share it with, with a few close friends, and now complete strangers, which is hard, hence the looking away and <laughs> the pauses and the ums and uhs, and I'm sorry about that, but I still wanted to needed to do this nonetheless. People have said that I'm a victim of a hate crime. And I am really hesitant to use that phrase myself. Uh, one, I, I don't like the phrase victim. I don't want to be known as a victim. Uh, not really crazy about the term survivor either. Um, but I also don't want to detract from the stories of people who were harmed much worse than I was or even killed. And also there's, there's that guilt. Um, you torture yourself. I shouldn't have drank that much. I shouldn't have believed him. I shouldn't have gone with him. I shouldn't have gone to his house. I know people are going to judge my decisions. Um, and no one is judging them more harshly than, than I am. And it's only because so much time has passed that I am able to talk about this at all um, so calmly and maybe a little bit detached. Um, we have made a lot of strides in human rights since the 90s. But there's still work to be done, especially when it comes to gay rights, because there are over 70 countries where it's punishable to be homosexual, oftentimes by death, um, which just blows my mind in this day and age that that's still even a remote possibility anywhere in the world. But it is. And I'm linking a charity down in the description box. If you're so inclined to donate to a cause like this, it's called the Rainbow Railroad. And what they do is help people who live in areas where it is dangerous to be gay immigrate to safer places so that they can live their lives and be their true selves. So that's linked below if you're so inclined. People have made a lot of assumptions about me based on my teeth. You never really know someone's story. You don't know 
where they've been, how they got there, what they're dealing with, what they've dealt with, maybe what they're still dealing with. Um, but I can tell you that, no, I'm not a meth head. No, I don't have poor hygiene. I'm just someone who had something really awful happen to her. I just never had the means to fix it properly. I guess the thought I want to leave you with is that um, if you see someone or hear someone being bullied, if you see or hear something that you know in your heart is wrong, don't participate in it, but say something, do something. Because what's no skin off your nose, what matters so little to you, can mean the world to somebody else. That's all I have for you today. If you made it this far, thank you so much for listening. And take care of yourself and others. <laughs>